Should Biden have gone? No, I, I don't think so. You have a, a leader of that country uh, who was involved in the murder of a Washington Post journalist. Uh, I don't think that that type of government should be rewarded uh, with a visit by the President of the United States. Look, you got a family that is worth a hundred billion dollars, which crushes democracy, which treats women as third class citizens, which murders and imprisons its opponents. And if this country believes in anything, we believe in human rights, we believe in democracy. And I just don't believe that we should be uh, maintaining a, a warm relationship with a dictatorship uh, like that. Authorities across Southern Europe continue to battle huge wildfires on Sunday in countries including Spain, Greece, France, and Italy, with hundreds of deaths blamed on soaring temperatures that scientists say are consistent with climate change. Shocked residents watched thick plumes of smoke rise above Spain's central western Herte Valley. Resident Miguel Angel Tomeo said the heat was making their previously green and cool home more like Spain's semi-arid south. Climate change affects everyone. This area, which is green and cool in summer, is becoming like the south, like Badajoz, Cordoba, and Sevilla. Across the country in Catalonia, people were forced to flee their homes as wildfires quickly spread near residential areas. Temperatures in the country have reached as high as 114 degrees Fahrenheit or 45.7 Celsius during the nearly week-long heat wave. Residents in Madrid took to the streets in an annual water fight to battle the heat. Spain's weather agency said it would end Monday, but warned temperatures would remain abnormally high. In France, wildfires have now spread over 27,000 acres in the southwestern region of Gironde, and more than 14,000 people have been evacuated, regional authorities said Sunday, adding that more than 1,200 firefighters were working to control blazes that have grown massively over the past few days. The country has issued red alerts for several regions, the highest possible warning, urging residents to be extremely vigilant. In Italy, where smaller fires have blazed in recent days, forecasters expect temperatures above 40 Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit in several regions in coming days. Similar temperatures are forecast in Britain on Monday and Tuesday in what would top a previous official record of 38.7 Celsius or 102 Fahrenheit set in Cambridge in 2019. Britain's National Weather Service has issued its first extreme heat warning for parts of England. On Sunday, the beaches in the southern town of Bournemouth were packed as people sought to cool off in the sea. When the Paris police came knocking on July 16, 1942, Joseph Schwartz, then 15 years old, was no longer at home. Forewarned, he and his father Lejbus had gone into hiding. Earlier roundups of French Jews had only targeted men, so he assumed his mother Ruchla and younger brother Paul would be safe. But the net had widened. That day and the next, entire families were snatched from their homes in the largest mass detention of Jewish people by French police in collaboration with Nazi occupiers. Among them were Ruchla, Paul and Lejbus, who turned himself into police, hoping it would spare his wife and child. Joseph would never see them again. I didn't know where to go. I was in an altered state. I didn't know where I was at. You leave your parents one day, everything is fine. They kiss you, they tell you, take care of yourself. And the day after, there is nobody left. Around 13,000 people were taken to the Winter Velodrome south of Paris before being sent to concentration camps across Europe. As France commemorates the 80th anniversary of the Veldiv Roundup, authorities are in a race against time to collect witness accounts from elderly survivors like Schwartz. There aren't many of us left, people my age. I was 15 then, I'm 95 now. The Shoah Memorial in Paris, which collects archives on France's Holocaust victims, has launched an appeal to reach the last witnesses and survivors. Though many stories have been lost, they keep coming in, says Lior Lalias Madja, who is head of documentation. 
C'est assez fou. It's a bit crazy because we always think we're done obtaining documents. At the memorial, we have millions of archives, thousands of photographs, but documents keep coming in. The last witnesses we had were people who had never talked about it. We are 80 years after the events, and we can wonder, do they still have memories of all of that? Yes, they still have memories of all that. It's extremely fresh. Extremely frais. Looking back on it now, the thing that shocks Schwartz the most is the fact that the police were granted medals for resistance after the liberation of Paris. Preserving the memory is always necessary for a nation. Hiding the dark days of a country brings nothing to the future of that country. We were very, very pleased and happy to hear about the decision to allow planes to go straight uh, from Israel over uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. It will uh, come into action when the two civil aviation authorities speak to each other, something that might take some time, but is under process already. Some people are working on that, so I'm, I'm positive that it will happen. It is very um, important for Israelis because it will save them a lot of money and a lot of time, the being able to go from Israel to the distant um, uh, places uh, and not going around Saudi Arabia as we have to do now. So for us, it is really, it's good news. It's a better situation than um, a full alienation and zero um, communication. So whatever you know, we can achieve, we should go for it and work towards building more and more relationship, more and more trust. I wonder how it didn't fall on our houses, because it came from over there. It was full of smoke. It had a noise I can't describe and went over the mountain. It passed the mountain and turned and crashed into the fields. There were flames. We were scared. A lot of cars came, but they could not approach because there were continuous explosions. Thank you.